The New Jersey Devils have overcome their December swoon and are back on track in the Metropolitan Division. Trey Matthews of Locked On Devils joins us to discuss the Devils' recent success and what they might do with the trade deadline. All that and more on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to the Locked On NHL podcast, everybody. Gil Morton, so glad you could join us today. And thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Well, we're talking New Jersey Devils. That means we bring in the host of Locked On Devils, Trey Matthews. And Trey, great to have you back on the show. And things looking up again for the Devils after a little bump in the road in December. Yeah, thanks for having me, Gil. I, I just want to say uh, one thing. Uh, when I was announcing the Erie Auditors game, um, they had this player on, on the team named, uh, his last name was Gil Martin. Like, so... I know your first name is Gil and your last name is Martin, but his last name was Gil Martin. So I just wanted to put that out there. But, yeah, things are good. Um, during my time as a part-time uh, credentialed media member, I wish the Devils would have won more games. They only won one game, and then they sent one into a, a shootout loss. But, uh, you know, I can't complain. It, w- it was definitely a rough December, but that 13-game win streak really uh, saved uh, the Devils' season. Yeah, got got him off to a great start, gave them a little bit of a cushion. Wanted to ask you about Jack Hughes, already past the 30-goal mark, 33 goals in 49 games. How good is he, and, and is there yet another level that he could take his game to? I think Jack Hughes really started to step up his game late November when he got that hat trick against the Washington Capitals this this kid is the truth, and that's why – and I, I can't describe it any other way. He's amazing, and um, the, the overall narrative is that he's sort of having a Taylor Hall type of year, and if it wasn't for Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl, he would definitely be the front runner to win the Hart Memorial Trophy. You could still make a case for him, but he just had an OT game winner against the Dallas Stars recently. He was uh, the, the really the only consistent player during the month of December in which the Devils were struggling. Uh, he and uh, also I'll I'll put in Nico Heischer in that in that regard as well. But yeah, Jack Hughes has just been um, the franchise piece for the Devils. Like early on in the season, we 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 saw him like hovering around point per game kind of player, but we knew he could take it to another level because we were just like if he played in more games last year, he he would be he would have been the first Devils player in history to eclipse a uh, hundred points in a season something that Patrick Eliash hasn't accomplished, something that Taylor Hall hasn't accomplished. But for Jack Hughes, he can definitely take it to another level. And he, he's he's definitely our MVP. And uh, it, like I said, if it wasn't for that two-headed monster out in Edmonton, Jack Hughes would uh, probably be the front runner to or the favorite to win the Hart Memorial Trophy. Now, barring anything, um, you know, barring anything happening to Conor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl, we'll see what happens. Talk to me about the impact that Vitek Vanacek has had on this team this year. You know what? Uh, my overall thing for Vitek Vanacek, I said this when we first obtained him, was that he's good in the regular season. Like, But the problem was, come postseason for the Washington Capitals, he completely crashed and burned. And unfortunately, you do seal your legacy in the playoffs. So I think that's what Capitals fans remember him by. They, I'm sure they still remember uh, his uh, very solid regular season performance. But at the end of the day, it's just like come playoff times when you don't perform, that's what people are going to have in their mind. So the fact that we got Vitek Vanacek during uh, the NHL draft and we were we traded away a few picks and now and now he's essentially our starting goalie. Vitek Vanacek has been everything and more that the Devils faithful could could ask for because the last few years we've been looking for a suitable backup, but Vitek Vanacek has exceeded that. He's our go-to guy. He's on a lengthy win streak. And quite honestly, you could make a case for him to win the Vesna as well. I know I sound crazy, but 
Will he win it? Absolutely not. It would be the most out of left field winner in recent memory. But if he continues to have this good year and then come next year, he repeats it, then I think you could give him a legitimate case to actually win the Vesna trophy and maybe not be like a top five or a top 10 kind of player. But Vitek Manchek has been phenomenal. He's uh, kept the New Jersey Devils in games for a, for a lot of our wins. Like he makes great, great a save after great a save after great a, a save. He comes up clutch and overall Vitek Manchek, he's, he's just been amazing. And one of the X factors going into the season for Devils was uh, goaltending and uh, could, could it uh, withstand consistently and we thought Mackenzie Blackwood would be our go-to guy but when Blackwood went down with that MCL uh sprain uh earlier this year Vitek Vancheck really stepped up to the plate and ever since then he's been he's been solid in between the pipes for the Devils. Trade deadline is rapidly approaching we're what about five weeks away give or take uh the Devils a lot of rumors going around that they will be active what are you hearing and what would you like to see? Okay, so I've been let down before, so I'm trying to keep my expectations somewhat conservative. But the main piece that I'm sure the Devils uh, are trying to obtain is Timo Meyer, And this is something that's been talked about since uh, last spring, which is could the Devils obtain Timo Meyer? Now, here's the thing. It's not going to be as cut and dry as people say it's going to be because here's one factor you have to consider, and it's a big factor. It's just for Bratt and his overall contract. He's only signed for this season. And then come free agency, he's going to be a restricted free agent. So that makes it a little easier. But remember, the the ultimate goal is to re-sign Jesper Bratt long term, similar to Dougie Hamilton, similar to Jack Hughes, similar to Nico Heischer, because he's a vital component of this team. Now, is it possible that the New Jersey Devils can obtain Timo Meyer, Meyer sign long term and Jesper Bratt sign long term? Yes, but it's not as cut and dry as people say it's going to be. There's going to have to be a third team involved to try to get some pieces off the table. So in my eyes, I think you got to get Mackenzie Blackwood off the table because he's set to become a uh, restricted free agent. Then you got Damon Severson. He's going to demand uh, a decent amount of money. And unfortunately that money could be put to use somewhere else. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. Miles Wood has been struggling mightily the last month or so. So could Miles Wood also be factored in? Alexander Holtz, he's a great player, but at the same time, it's just like if we're talking about Timo Meyer here, you might have to include him in, in a package. I'm sure that's what the Sharks are going to demand. They're going to demand a high-end prospect, and Alexander Holtz has struggled in the NHL, but he's lights out in AHL, so he's he's definitely still has that untapped potential. So the overall thing is I would love to get someone like Timo Meyer. I think it's definitely doable, and whether or not the and, – and Jesper Bratt is eligible to sign his extension because – he was eligible to do it um, come New Year's Day, but it hasn't happened yet. I think he and his camp are going to wait until the offseason. So that's my overall thing. What is Jesper Bratt going to demand? I think it's going to be anywhere north of $6 million, some, somewhere in that ballpark. So that's something you have to factor in. So uh, while the Devils, it is plausible for them to get Timo Meyer, there's still some other factors that they have to consider. And you do have to ask that overall question, which is if we get Timo Meyer now, do we run the risk of losing Jesper Bratt? So that's my overall thing. So I, I I would love to get Timo Meyer. I think he would be a great um, a great addition, especially on the line of Nico Heischer, because he and Nico Heischer represent the same country. So we would get like the Swiss cheese um, a line combination or something like that. But also the one thing I want Devils fans to remember is don't sleep on – uh, what's going on in Vancouver because their struggles can actually work better for us. Now we talked, uh, me and my um, associate, he goes by name, Jersey Joe. We talked about maybe getting Andre Kuzmenko added to the roster, but he just signed his extension. So he's probably off the table. Quinn Hughes, it would be a great marketing ta tactic because you got Luke Hughes at the university of Michigan. And yes, he is good people. Don't, don't, don't let someone on Twitter <laughs> fool you. He is really, really, really good. So Luke Hughes at the University of Michigan just scored four goals. Um, and then you got Jack Hughes. Obviously, we talked about top five uh, Hart Memorial Trophy finalists maybe this year. And then you get their brother, Quinn. So you got all three Hughes brothers. But I think that would be more of a marketing tactic than uh, an actual need standpoint. But uh, I think they could aim for someone maybe like Brock Besser. I think that's doable because Brock Besser has been in the rumor mill before for the Devils. 
I remember talking about it last year. He's injury prone. His value has gone down. I don't think he's worth a first round uh, selection anymore. So I think you could go after someone like Brock Besser, um, uh, Bo Horbach. Uh, I, I I personally just don't see him fitting in anywhere because we already got two uh, starting centers and Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes. So where would you slide him? You want to put him at a winger position and have him play out of uh, his, his uh, regular position. We already got our captain. That's Nico Heischer. He wouldn't have a letter on the sweater. So I just think that's, that looks good on paper, but overall uh, those four players I just listed from the Vancouver Canucks or, or three now um, are doable as well, but it's just a matter of like, how do we approach it? So I think the realistic thing for the devils is to go after Brock Besser. And I think he would be a good addition on our third line because that's something the Devils have been struggling this year because their top line, Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes, their lines are, you know, always good. You know, Jack Hughes knows how to lead a team. Nico Heischer, same way, great two-way player. Then the BMW line, they just got reunited because Nathan Bashan is back from injury. Maybe wait for them to get going just a little bit more. They've been struggling the last few games. And then that third line has always been somewhat of a struggle. So trying to get the most out of Dawson Mercer. Yegor Sharon Govich is – there sometimes he's not just for Boquis, solid on defense. Wish we could get more offensive production from him, but I think adding Brock Besser to that third line could pack a bigger punch for the Devils. Will be interesting to see how it plays out. Trey, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? You can find uh, the show at Locked On Devils, and you can listen to it wherever you get your podcast from. You can also watch it on YouTube. You can follow me at Trey Matt Four T R E Y M A T T and the number four. And uh, yeah, just uh, find Locked On Devils wherever you get your podcast from. All right, Trey, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Gil. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better because they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to three thousand dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown the FanDuel sportsbook app is safe secure and super easy to use and best of all you can get paid your winnings instantly so join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL.